Are right, you ready for this? I thought I was, but <laughs> I, what if I have to turn? I'll be right back. Okay. Maybe I can just get used to it. Just, if there's no system. I knew this was going to happen, so just here you go. Probably that way. Leopard, leopard up and down. Yeah. Just like and that. we'll just, just stretch her around, right? The old stretch her really? now, now it's a normal steering wheel, sort of. Oh, that looks like it's from factory. Good to go. <laughs> You're watching Throttle Hess. I'm Thomas. And I'm James! And this is the Model S Plaid. You're looking at a four-door, almost 5,000-pound executive car that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and even embarrass some hypercars. Here's a few numbers. 1,020 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 1.99 seconds, a top speed of 200 miles per hour, and enough range to get you and passengers comfortably from San Francisco to LA without ever stopping. This is the Model S Plaid. Three motors, zero normal steering wheels, and apparently 10 teraflops of processing power. So today we want to find out what it's like when you actually push this thing. And more importantly, we want to find out what the hell a teraflop even is. And a huge thank you to Nazar and his team at Favorite Motors, a pre-owned superstore here in Toronto. As one of the very lucky first deliveries, they are the ones that provided us with today's Model S Plaid. And in exciting news, you can have one of your own because we've teamed up with Omaze to give away a Model S Plaid and $20,000. We'll talk about it more at the end, but all you need to know right now is that to enter, go to omaze.com slash throttlehouse for your chance to win. And the good news is your entry goes towards helping a great cause. Okay, plaid time. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, over a thousand horsepower, 5,000 pounds. Preparing for launch. Suspension entering cheetah stance. Ready to launch. <laughs> yes! Oh, the dash! Oh! 190! 220! Two! What the hell? Oh. Braking zones disappear in this car for more than just one reason. It's severely underbraked. And also it's so fast. What is this? <laughs> Quad Maga. Whoa, let's do that again. Oh. Makes you feel like you're in the Matrix when he says he can learn Kung Fu. And he says more and he goes, <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, anything above 10 seconds in a quarter mile is just, doesn't exist to me anymore. Just over nine seconds, that's the sweet spot. This thing is so heavy. It's, it's undeniably impressive. Now, I've been very excited to try this because it's actually a very exciting time to be an EV, especially a Tesla. Hertz just bought 100,000 of them. And I was just in England and there was a petrol crisis. So everyone was lined up down the road getting fuel and all the Teslas and Kona Electrics and ID3s and Honda Electrics or Honda E's were all just smirking as they drove by. And also, gas prices are a fortune in North America. However, a Tesla Model S plan is not really a cost-saving exercise because it costs almost $200,000 aspect. A discount from something like a Taycan Turbo S. But the impact of this car 
is undeniable. Listen, I remember three things vividly in my life. The day I had my first kiss, the day I realized that pay-per-view doesn't actually include paper, and the day I drove a Tesla Model 3. In that moment, it made everything feel like a dinosaur because it is just so easy to get on with, and it makes so much sense. The, the throttle input from, to the braking, to the size, it, it just answers so many questions. And now Tesla have gone and up the ante because just as we were starting to get familiar with the Model 3s and Ys of the world, they've added this plaid and we've already raced the Tesla Model S performance, which, which was absurd. They've reinvented the wheel a bit here and I... I, <laughs> I would probably rather have that leather print cover, to be honest. But how's it like to daily? Smooth. This has FSD. It has summon. You can literally drive the car from your phone. We've been moving it around the track all day so to, to make it easier for us. It has every, every little bell and whistle you can imagine. I'm comfortable. The driving position is good. The gauge cluster, this huge screen, they've modernized it. And it has power that really nothing can compete with. And we were recently in a Lexus LFA and I said that the only thing this had on the Lexus was blinding speed and it is absurd and driving this around the track which is not where this car belongs by the way it is fantastic on the road but driving it on the track i stand by what i said because there's a lot to be desired at the limit but i forgive it for that because it's a road car thomas is a little bit more how do we say it? Scrutinizing. Scrutinizing? What? That's not me. In fact, right off the bat, a complaint that everybody has that I don't think is an issue is the steering wheel. Yeah, it's a yoke. Yeah, it's a gimmick. But you know what? If you have correct steering wheel technique, it's not an issue at all. Your hands are supposed to stay at nine and three. Even when I'm crossing over in a parking lot, I don't find it an issue. On the road, usability, I got no issues with this car. On the track though, it's uh, what's the word? Dangerous. Not dangerous in a cool way. Dangerous in the way that it's dangerously underbraked. Really, really like with worse brakes than a Hellcat Red Eye with more power. Really, really, really not like the braking zone for the straightaway here is about 15 to 20 car lengths earlier than any other car I've driven. And now I'm braking. And it's not stopping. Come on, come on, come on, find some grip. Man, there's the ABS. Stay out of the ABS. Come on. And into the first corner. Next issue that I have with it when you really start to drive it is that as soon as you start to get any slip out of it, the power steering can't keep up. And it, it gets so heavy. Right there. Oh. Teslas have this issue with weight. Too many cheeseburgers. Oh, come turn, 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 turn. To its credit, it's not understeering very much. In fact, it kind of actually stays fairly neutral as you go through a corner, but there's just so much mass. And, oh, that's, no, oh, okay. <laughs> this doesn't have the full track mode yet that like the Model 3 Performance has. So I can't turn the traction control off. So I'm just kind of stuck waiting for it to bite in, which it does too early sometimes and too late other times. Okay. Oh, there's no power steering. Oh, come on. Oh, oh the is so quick. Oh my God, it's so quick. Braking, 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 braking. Brake, 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 brake. Slow down. I know you think I'm being dramatic, but I'm just not. I'm just not. It's a thousand horsepower in the brakes of a Camry. So, conclusions. This car, if you buy it and start to really rip it on on and off ramps or even think about taking it to the track, it completely falls down in the way that a big heavy German sedan would not. The Germans would make sure that the car can do all of these things. As a cruiser and as a thing to show off to your friends just how quick it is in a straight line, 
it does that in spades. And the novelty of this right here. <laughs> that doesn't get old. Here's the thing about electric cars that I've discovered. I've driven a lot of them now. They start off exciting when you first get in them. Wow, the torque. Then they get boring, okay? They get boring because it's the same thing over and over again, just G-forces. But then there's a moment, and it just so happens to be at a thousand horsepower, when it gets really, really exciting again. <laughs> oh, man. This is a very, very flawed, but very fun car. Please don't take it to a track. Okay, the lap time. I do need to mention that the battery for this lap was just over 60%, such as the reality of driving a Tesla to a racetrack and then doing a few runs. Also, as mentioned, this one doesn't have track mode yet, so I really had to focus on driving around the stability control. And I was only able to do one hot lap because the brakes were dangerously overheated at the end of this lap. As for the car itself, I really can't stress enough that this car doesn't belong anywhere near a track or near 10 tenths driving. I mentioned the brakes already, and I wasn't joking when I said that the power steering couldn't keep up. Any fast steering corrections were fully unassisted, which made driving it at the limit very difficult. And, as is the case with most Teslas I've driven on the track, the Plaid doesn't have suspension stiff or sophisticated enough to deal with its mass. Thankfully though, as soon as you get this thing in a straight line, the science fiction level thrust makes up a lot of time. Let's watch the rest of the lap. Okay, mm -mm. I have the lap times. Okay, we, there's a lot of caveats. I'm gonna list them, ready? Go on. Okay, wasn't full battery. Correct, yep. Okay, so that's number one. That's yep. a significant issue. Uh, number two, um, that's pretty much it. Traction control. Full oh, that is the track mode. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's fair. There's no track mode yet for it. Okay, so it did a 112.5. So, okay, so that puts it, where's like that put it? Mustang GT. Toyota Supra. Toyota Supra area. <laughs> For an almost 5,000 pound car that isn't, doesn't have track mode, that's pretty good. Sure, I, I'll, give, I'll, I'll see your that's pretty good, but I will also say, you know, an M5 yeah. would, you know, has still crushing straight line performance and can do corners. Right. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. And, right. it, and it has brakes that work. Yeah, this the is brakes the biggest issue. Slightly under brakes. Yeah, slightly. Severely. A little severely. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I, I I really think that time's pretty good. It's fine. It, it, I, I'm gonna guess that in perfect conditions and everything said and done, yeah. there's maybe a 110 in it. The problem is for me, like I'm usually pretty good at judging braking zones. Yeah. I use my vision. Some people use markers on the track. I right. use vision. I judge how much how fast I'm going and what I know the car can do. This one. It, the, the braking zone was like the end of the braking zone was so far away from where I had to start oh, braking. I, I felt it on the straight. As yeah, well. you, you yeah. Know, you're just like, do I think I should start braking now? And you're like, oh no, that wasn't early enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. How does it look? Well, it looks very much like a Model S. They haven't changed it that much. No, you know. but they've stuck to it. Like, and I kind of, I kind of appreciate that. It's like the Porsche model. They, they still look like a 911. The new Range Rover. Yeah. Oh, that is. Just looks like a Range Rover, but yeah. modernized. So they modernized. Yeah. They've done it well. But like there's, the nothing, there's nothing aggressively plaid going on visually. No, it says the, the plaid on the back, which yeah. is really cool. No, you know what? I, I like the way this car looks. I've always liked the way this car looks. And I think it looks great in black. Like, super sleek. Like, it does. It's really neat. And the black with the white interior is awesome. Can we look at the inside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No soft clothes, by the way. Yeah. Come on. Come get, on, Elon. You get to a certain price. <laughs> yeah, you expect it. Okay, so this is like basically just a cleaner version of the model. Also, the, the screen, is, the obvious difference is the screen's going this way now. And it's massive. It is massive, it's yeah. Massive. But the, the, the advantage of Model S over Model 3 is that you get a, a gauge cluster. And a really good one. A really cool one, yeah. yeah. And now you can see it unhindered 
thanks to this no more steering wheel. <laughs> okay, listen. Uh, yes, there it is. Elon, yeah. <laughs> think, think of what your stock could Hold on. actually do. Just wait. Just Two trillion. Listen. <laughs> Two tri okay, so Elon is... I'm going to end my words there, but I'm going to say that I don't mind this, and I can't believe I'm saying that, because honestly, this is how I hold my hands in every car, it, at nine and three, just like this. And when I'm like, how do I hear? I put this into drive here. Can, tap, the, tap the card, okay, and then press the brake to drive. There it is. Okay. When I, when I cross over, I do this. It feels totally normal. It feels completely normal to me. I haven't had a single issue with it, right? I spent too much time on my simulator practicing for autocross to like be able to do hand over hand properly. This just feels so normal to me. I've had an issue with it. There's no, it can't drift this thing yet. So like when we get one that, that has the, the track mode, I yeah. can try and drift it, this might be an issue, but otherwise I think it's cool. Well, we, we've we sat in testers before and said that the steering wheel just simply isn't exciting enough. And they listened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, we need less of it. That will make, yeah. it, will make it more exciting. You can't complain if it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, and speaking of doesn't exist, we've lost the stalk that allows you to choose your your gears. Gear. Yeah. yeah, so it's over here now, or automatic, I believe, right? Yeah. I haven't personally tested the automatic, but it's, it's kind of neat. But I, I honestly don't mind this. No. You slide up and down. It's quick. It's right there. It's right by your hand. We have gone capacitive touch for a few things, like the, even the door handles and the, the buttons on the steering wheel. Something you were very upset about in the Ferrari Roma. Yeah, but Tesla does them better than Ferrari does. And, they, and they're quick. Yes, they're quick. And they there's like a, I don't know, there's, there's a little bit of haptic feedback to it. Yeah. Right? So it doesn't, it honestly doesn't bother me. How do you cancel? You click it again. Okay. The whole infotainment's quick. Yeah, yeah. You can get Netflix and your, your radio, your satellite radio, and YouTube, there's an arcade, right? You know, it's, it's tons of fun. Here's the thing. A lot of people give Tesla a hard time, yeah. right? Like a lot of people like, you know, and then the, 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 the Tesla fans come out and enforce. But my issues with Tesla are not, I think, what most people's issues are people say like oh this this is gimmicky and this is gimmicky and i don't like the lack of a gear selector blah 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 i don't care about any of that the only issue i have with it is the is the the delta between how fast it is in a straight line and how well it can break and go around corners it's an it's, it's an, an easy like muscle this. car an easy muscle car from 1970 when it was yeah. ridiculously fast and had drum brakes <laughs> that's what it feels like. I, I picture this as an S-Class that can go really, really, really fast in a straight line. Yeah, and then they forgot to put the brake pads in it. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't mean to, to beat a dead horse, but anyway, I like the big, this is really neat. I've always liked that it, in Tesla. There's such a sense of occasion in here now that there wasn't in the previous gen. And, and kudos to Tesla for having the balls to actually do white. This is white white. It's not off white. Well, they've had that for a while. They yeah. Have in the Model really X we have. It does. Thank you. Sorry. It does look old yeah. eventually. But Got some carbon fiber accents going on. No, the build quality in here is is totally is totally acceptable. We I haven't have no we haven't actually noticed many gaps on this car. No, no, no. There's there's a there's there's a little bit of a panel gap in the rear. Like it doesn't line up perfectly, but yeah. it's like so minimal. I don't care. Right? Okay. So let's just let's just jump a bit more meta for a second because okay. we're so used to seeing a Model S pad can dust that. Yeah. And that might be true in a straight line. It is true in a straight it is, line. It is but only true in a straight line. We've also line. tested it in maybe some upcoming videos. Yep. But. Allegedly. From a performance perspective, from a thrill perspective, even the plaid can't match. Well, it, it's, it's, it gives you the same thrill that skydiving does in that you jump out of a plane, it's terrifying. That's how you feel when you're at 270 kilometers an hour and you don't know where the end of the track is. It is pretty scary. It's that moment of like, <laughs> okay, I'm going really quick. Um, yeah, it, it's, it, it is a really unique vehicle. I think, I think it needs some work in certain departments and I don't think it's ready for the aggressive. The, no, nah, I don't think it's ready for on ramps and off ramps personally, but that's my opinion. Um, I think just, just respect the weight. Please respect, if you have one of these, seriously respect how quickly it can get to speed and Take your take time going around the corners. And judge your braking zones. Don't hit a kitten, basically, is what we're saying. Um, conclusion time? I, yeah, I think this is all that needs to be said, really. <laughs> so, the award for least assuming, fastest straight line executive sedan goes handily to the Model S Plaid. Nothing, and we mean nothing in its class or even a class above, comes even close to the raw speed this car brings. But make no mistake, this car's performance and speed demand respect from competition and driver alike. As for our gripes, 
we have heard that there may be some performance upgrades coming, which could go a lot of the way to controlling its mass when driven at the limit. But as the silent, comfortable, hypercar-level speed machine that it was born to be, the Model S Plaid, for now, reigns supreme. And you can win one of your own thanks to Omaze. For your chance to win the car and $20,000, go to omaze.com slash throttlehouse to enter. Not only do your entries give you a chance to win, but they also go toward helping a great cause. In this case, it's Reverb, an organization committed to empowering action on important environmental and social issues like reducing greenhouse gas pollution and disposing of over 3 million single-use water bottles. So go there, donate, and good luck. James, did we ever find out what a teraflop is? Actually, I did. It's a measure used to calculate processing power, Thomas. In this case, it's 10 to the 12th power floating points operations per second, or 2 to the 40th. In other words, the Tesla has 10 trillion flops. So you still don't know what it means then? Not a clue.